Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this edition, we'll go through the process to configure a multi-point wireless I.O. gateway to connect a remote I.O. device and a third-party Modbus device to our control center. A standalone multi-point wireless I.O. gateway acting as a Modbus slave with a PLC acting as a master will drive outputs on a gateway with remote I.O and will read and write data to another gateway acting as a Modbus master connected to a Modbus slave device. Since the primary gateway does not have any I.O. expansion modules, input and output data will be in the form of registers controlled by our Modbus master, in this case a PLC, in our control center. So to do this, we'll be using ProSoft Wireless I.O. Builder software. We'll create a project We'll set up the communication parameters of our wireless gateway. We'll bring in our I.O. modules and Modbus devices. And then we will copy our inputs and outputs to Modbus registers and create write commands to map them to where we want them to go. If you only need to map inputs and outputs together, we have another video that focuses on that type of configuration. Let's begin. We'll open ProSoft Wireless I.O. Builder. It's just an .exe file that you can put on your desktop. We'll create a new project. And this will open the project creation wizard that will walk us through the steps of configuring our gateway. We'll give the project a name and we'll choose a file location. And when you've done that, click Next. Now we'll select the frequency. There are three different frequencies available you need to be sure to pick the frequency that matches the radio in your gateway. In my case, I'll be using the 900 megahertz model. By default, the channel is set to zero. It's always good practice to select a different channel just to minimize the chances of getting too much interference on the same channel. And finally, we can set our group. And in this instance, the term group is used to refer to an individual multi-point wireless I.O. gateway and whatever I.O. modules they are connected to. By default, the first gateway you add will be assigned group 0, and the next will be assigned group 1, and so on. Just note that you can't have two gateways with the same group number on the same network. Next, we'll configure the primary wireless gateway. We'll give the gateway a name. This is what we'll see in the project. We can select the power output to the antenna. Be sure to select 10 milliwatts or higher for any sort of real application. And we have our Modbus RTU setting. The slave ID is what the gateway will be assigned on your Modbus network. Uh, you would set the baud rate to match what you're using on your network as well. And for config port, by setting it to Modbus Slave, we'll be able to use our PC as a master to read and write registers to the gateway. By setting it to debug, you can see all the data coming out and any responses that you receive. We can come back and adjust these settings later if we need to. So for now, click Finish and Confirm. So now we have our project set up and we can see our gateway in the project tree here. Any other gateways that we bring into the project will also appear here and they will inherit most of the communication parameters that we entered for the primary gateway. So we'll go ahead and add them in now. To do this you can hit the green plus sign and select wireless I.O. gateway. Uh, be sure you have site 1 highlighted when you do this and there is gateway 2. You can also just right click and select insert and select YO gateway. By default, the new groups or gateways are named gateway one, two, three, and so on. If you want to give them specific names, you can just right click on the respective gateway and select rename. So I've already named my primary gateway control room. And my other two gateways I'll call process one and power monitor. Now to access any of the gateway properties, you would simply highlight the gateway and then click the edit button in the control bar 
or you can right click and select edit. Here you have access to the radio and config port properties if you want to make changes to what you set up in the project creation wizard. The RTU port tab is where you configure your serial network properties. Now we set the config port to Modbus Slave and you can see under RTU port that we have the option to set it as a Modbus Master or Slave here. So the Modbus Slave mode under the config port creates a Master Slave dynamic between your PC and the gateway, allowing your PC to pull Modbus registers through the config port on the front of the gateway. It actually has no effect on the RTU port settings which apply to the physical RS-232 and RS-45 pinouts on top of the gateway. You would set it to Modbus Master if you want to use the gateway to pull registers from a device that it's connected to, and you would set it to Modbus Slave if you have a PLC or an HMI or any other Modbus Master device that's pulling data and you just want the gateway to act as a slave on the network. The IO bus tab is where you can integrate IO expansion modules. Any IO modules you add to a wireless IO gateway becomes an extension of the gateway. Thus, the IO points are accessible through the gateway's properties. So for our primary gateway, we won't need any of these, but I would like to add a module to the process one gateway. So I'll double click on that gateway and click edit. And I'll go to the IO bus tab. I'll click new and select an IO module. We have three different modules to choose from. And in this case, we'll go with a digital IO module. Under module settings, the most important thing is that we need to set the module ID to match the dial setting on the module itself. Each module in a group must have its own unique ID. Note that the ID dial on the module cannot actually be reset with the power on. So you can't just set it to a different ID on the fly. And this is because the ID is only read by the gateway once on startup. So if you need to set the dial on an IO module to a different ID, you would have to power down the group, set the dial, and then power back on. We can see the module name here and it's just derived from its ID number. And we can set the interval. The lowest setting is one second. We can also choose what to bring into the imports table. In this case, I'm just going to add the inputs. When you're finished, click OK and then OK again on the gateway properties window. In order to relay data from a third party Modbus master device, to a point or output on the wireless IO network, a Modbus write function must be created in the primary gateway's Modbus table. So once this has been created, the point can be mapped to an output or shared with another device within the network. So we'll create a write function. Double click on the primary gateway in the project tree and select the Modbus tab. Then in the window, right click and select new write import. We'll give a name to our write command. We'll keep integer as the type and click OK. And here we can see our command. Type integer register 3001. This is the default starting address for integers in the multipoint gateway. Floats start at 7001. And we can also see the source gateway here and point our command. Now we'll click on the imports tab and with our newly created write command, we'll select it, click once on process one, and then click on the import button here in the toolbar. A window will appear to confirm that we want to map this import to our process one gateway. Click OK. This will bring the command from our control room gateway as a source into our process one gateway. Now we can double click on process one and go to the imports tab. We can see the entry here for the point that we just brought over. Source is the primary gateway point Modbus register 3001 and our command name. 
Now we'll click on this point, right click and copy, go to the output tab, select the analog output one, right click and select paste output source. Now when the Modbus master writes a one or zero to register 3001 on the control room gateway, it will drive the output on process one on and off. I can confirm this by clicking on the Exports tab of my control room and seeing that I do have Modbus Register 3001 going to Destination Process 1. Next, we'll read and write data from our power monitor, which is a Modbus serial device. The gateway here does not have any I.O. modules either. It's just wired to the power monitor through an RTU connection. This gateway will need to be configured as a Modbus master in order to pull the power monitor, which is a slave. This will not interfere with our PLC Modbus master because they are not connected to each other over the same Modbus network. They are effectively separate Modbus networks. And it's our multi-point wireless I.O. gateways that are actually moving the data between them. So I'll select the gateway and hit edit. And on the RTU port tab, I'll set it to Modbus master mode. And I have it connected on the RS485 port. We don't have a slave ID as the master, obviously. And the RTU settings will have to match the configuration of the slave device that we're connecting to. Now, instead of adding I.O. modules to this gateway, we'll add a Modbus module. So with the power monitor selected, hit the plus icon, or you can right click, go down to insert and select Modbus module. And here we have our module window where we will configure all our communications with the Modbus power monitor. You can see the tabs we have at the top here. First, we'll go to the IO bus tab and enter in the slave ID of the Modbus device that we're connecting to. My power monitor is at slave ID 3. So next we'll go to the Modbus inputs and these are the registers we will read from the slave. I'll set the interval down to 5 seconds. Again, the minimum possible is 1 second. Starting register, this corresponds to your slave device's database. Here we start counting from register zero. So if your slave device starts counting at zero, then they will match up. Otherwise, if your device starts counting from one or 40,001, you would have to keep that offset in mind. I'll start writing at address zero and I'll write four registers. Values must be written as either 16 or 32-bit holding registers. The wireless I.O. gateways support function codes 3, 4, and 6. And for each point that we have, you can right click, edit, and give the register a name. Now I'll move on to the Modbus output tab. And this is where we can specify registers in the Modbus slave that we want to write to. You give the register address you want to read. Again, remembering that register zero corresponds to the first register in the slave database. I'm going to grab the word at register 25 on my power monitor. Once you have the register set, you can click add. The read command will show up in the window. I'm going to go ahead and give them a name since output one is pretty generic. And I'm going to grab 26 as well and give that a name. Once you have all your registers entered, you can click OK to close the window. We need to map these registers back to the control room gateway, which is accessible from our PLC. Like with the I.O. that we mapped earlier, we'll double click on the power monitor gateway. We'll click the imports tab and highlight the import points from our Modbus module. Single click on control room and hit the import button. We'll select either to post the points to integer or the float table. So now we'll select the control room gateway and we'll go to the Modbus tab. And we can see our points along with the register mapping that they've been assigned. 
These are the registers in the Gateways Modbus holding table where the data from our Modbus slave will be placed. The values generated in the slave device will be read into the power monitor gateway and then propagate to these registers in this gateway, which can then be pulled by our PLC, acting as a Modbus master on this end. In order to write to the addresses that we specified in the slave, staying in the Modbus table, we'll right-click and select New Write Import. This will create a new Modbus write command, and we'll give it a name, select the type of data we want, and click OK. I'll create a second command to control the second point. Then go to the Imports tab, select our newly minted write commands, single click on the power monitor and hit the import button. We'll post the points to the integer table. Then we'll select the power monitor and we'll select the write commands in the import tab, copy, Go to the Outputs tab, select the output points from our Modbus device, and paste the output source. So now, values written to these registers in the Power Monitor gateway will be pushed into the specified addresses of the Modbus slave. Now, all the Modbus read and write registers have been assigned. With our configuration set and our points mapped, we want to save this configuration file. Then, with your computer plugged into the config port on the front of the primary gateway, we'll double click on the primary gateway in the tree view and hit Update Device. This will send the configuration to the gateway. We'll get a progress bar that lets us know when the update is finished, and when this is done, we'll have to plug into each of the other gateways, making sure that they are selected in the tree view, and update them as well. Anytime you make changes to the communication parameters or the mapping of points on a gateway, you're going to have to plug in and update the configuration. One important thing to note is the site security key function. The multipoint wireless I.O. gateways are designed to only communicate with other multipoint wireless I.O. gateways that have the same security key in their configuration files. When you create a new project in Prosoft Wireless I.O. Builder, a new site security key is automatically generated and every gateway that's updated with this project file will be assigned that security key. Note that if you go up to File and Save As, this will be regarded as a new configuration file and generate a new key. Any groups within a network that are updated with this new file could be assigned the new key and they would then be unable to communicate with any other groups on the network. Keep in mind, if you're setting up a gateway for the first time, it'll update the configuration without incident. If, however, the gateway has been configured previously, you'll get a screen like this asking if you want to update the key or ignore it. If you're setting up a new network and are already planning on updating all the gateways, you can go ahead and choose Update since you want to use the new security key anyways. If, however, you have an existing network that's already up and running and you just want to make changes on the configuration of one or two gateways, then you should ignore the new security key. That way it will continue using the old key that all the other gateways on the network are still using and communications will go on uninterrupted. You can also retrieve a security key from the gateway and use it in place of the key generated by the project file by using the key button in the toolbar to read the site security key from the gateway. So as far as mapping inputs to outputs, that's really all there is to it. You just follow this same procedure. And that does it for this training session. If you have any questions or would like more information on this product, visit our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. Until next time, happy training.